Right, I'm moving on to a 9A ascent that's steeped in controversy. As reported on PlanetMountain.com, Angie Scarth Johnson has climbed Victimas Perez, a popular 9A in Margalef, Spain. She has been trying this route for the past two seasons and kept falling at the top moves, but now successfully made the first female ascent. However, shortly after her ascent, controversy struck when Beto Racco Solano posted on his Instagram that some holds have been modified on this route, Victimas Perez and also on Gancho Perfecto, a 9A+. Obviously, Angie felt involved and addressed the issue with a longer message on her Instagram. She explains that for a brief period of time, she left Margalift, and when she got back, she said, quote, I immediately noticed a difference in one of the crimps. Certain dimples on the hold had been removed, ultimately making it harder to hold. She further discovered that the last hold got sanded down as well, and Jorge confirmed her theory. Let's chat about the... Chipped holds. Chipped holds. Yes. Chipped, modified, sanded down. Uh, Some kind of difference made by man. Yes. So the argument against this is what, Teresa? Because I know that you probably feel quite strongly about this. I feel strongly about that people should find other hobbies instead of chipping holds. Yes, I do think that. But um, the other argument is against it, I guess. It's when you're establishing a route, like back in the days, you know, it was it was accepted to chip holds. Really? Slash. Well, Fred La- Rowling. True, true. No. Was any one of the pioneers back in the day of roots and chipped hold roots? Well, no, I think I think there was like there was a point definitely where everybody was like, look, what where is this going? Where's climbing going? People went from not bolting roots to bolting roots. The ethics changed from uh, being able to go ground up every time mm. to being able to work a route. Uh, and I think Fred Ruling was around in a time when, you know, people were just trying to push the limits and see what was possible. Yeah. And he pushed them to the extent of chipping a route that it would become harder, that it would become like this amazing route, maybe in sections where there wasn't one holds, he kind of created a hold in order to kind of create like a 9A, 9A plus route. Um, And obviously once that happened, people were like, no, that is too far. You can't actually do that. We can bolt routes, we can work routes, but you can't literally deface or like you can't change the formation of the rock in which the holds are that you are climbing kind of thing. Mm. So that was obviously where the boundaries were kind of like met. And obviously at, at certain periods over the last kind of 20, 30 years, you've seen this kind of cropping up in, in certain situations. I think in, two, in the early 2000s in Fontainebleau, there was like a, a guy that went around kind of defacing some classic roots. But was there a reason? Just but, out of pure boredom? Uh, or I, did he need to make it easier for himself? Who are we talking about here? This guy in Fontainebleau. I'm the Fontainebleau one, I'm not entirely sure what his motivations were. I think it was more a case of like possible vandalization right. of the roots. Uh, but obviously, once again, once that happened, people were like, you can't do that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, you probably will. But in Fre- so Fre- I'm going to go with Fred Ruling's argument. Fred Ruling's argument is that we are already defacing effectively the rock face by putting bolts in it, by climbing on it. We are like effectively polluting it with our fingers and our chalk and our all the other stuff that we kind of bring to it. So his argument was that why don't we just just go like why don't we just create our perfect roots why don't we yeah. just like do what we're already doing and do it to the extremity of that kind of thing right. um and I, like i don't necessarily agree with it but when you, there is a very good interview on really vertical which is our french show having speaking spoken about our, our other languages there is a very good um interview with him and he does explain his point of view and you come away with it thinking i i came away with it, from it thinking okay I still don't agree with it, but I kind of begin to understand his perspective and and at the time what he was trying to do. He was trying to push yeah. the boundaries, which is what we're all trying, like what the highest level, of, I was about to say what we're all trying to do, what the <laughs> highest level of climbers are trying to do is push the boundaries of the sport, of what's possible. And he just took it in a certain direction and people kicked back from that. Um, I don't think he's a bad guy. He just was like, he was a, he was a visionary mm-hmm. that, and his vision didn't fall in line with the rest of the climbing community. Yeah. So that is the argument for chip and holds and for doing stuff like this. But on a first ascent, not afterwards, because I think that's the problem right now is a surface yeah. in Margalef that these are established routes. And unfortunately, um, 
<laughs> there's almost, almost this mystery around it now of uh, of of why this whole dev changed uh because it's not clear whether it is to make it harder or easy and it only a couple of climbers now have tried these routes um but yeah i mean ideally i guess everybody will leave these routes intact also because it's a piece of history it's a piece of climbing history like and it's a big deal when like a hold is chipped or missing because like it does change route it changes if somebody's working that route you know like yeah which might be make it more difficult or easier for them